G'day. So how are we going today? I'm well. Um, so this is probably going to be my last video for a long time, maybe even forever. I'm going on holidays for a few months, so I don't really have any time to make videos in between. I thought we'd just talk about how you can make a grade in DaVinci Resolve without using DaVinci Resolve Studio. It's going to be a pretty easy, basic grade. We're going to do anything too dramatic, but I, I am going to show you how to do a look. Well, you know, some split turning and things like that. And my basic setup when it comes to my grading practices, when I'm working in or working on projects, I'm not going to do much editing in terms of this video. So it's just going to be, so it's going to be kind of rough, which I just did then. This is all the things you need to know. Well, all the things that you can learn to get started in DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a whole bunch of nodes. Now I'm going to do this. I'm on a Windows computer. I think on a Mac it's option S, but we're going to make one node. This is going to be our CST node, color space transform with an R for some reason. We're going to make another node for our balance. Another node for our saturation and our contrast. And we'll use this one for our, actually we'll do saturation here. Contra actually, you know what? This one should be contrast. Because we're adding contrast, we're adding in saturation. So we'll make our saturation here. And then this one will be for our you know, our brightness levels, basically. Okay, now after this, I'm going to make a bunch of more nodes by pressing Alt S. Now, these ones are going to be different. This one's going to live over here. These are going to be parallel nodes. This is going to be my secondary selections, meaning if I want to change a certain color on this shot here, or maybe I want to desaturate a certain part or vignette or anything like that, I always do that in my secondary. So this is going to be We'll call this, um, we'll call it desat. Maybe I want to do some desaturation. I'll call this one vin for vignette again with a poorly written thing. Um, I'm going to leave these ones as is for now. You may come back to them, probably won't. Now, this is going to be our last node here. So we're going to call this one CST or ODT, any way you want to call it. Basically, that's our color space transform. So we'll start with our color space transform, which would put our image in the proper color space, and then we'd go into our Rec 79 at the end. Again, this is gonna be a rough video, so sorry about all the uh, incorrect speaking, et cetera, et cetera. I just don't have a lot of time, but that's okay. As for the channel itself, I might just stop making the videos altogether. It really hasn't uh, taken off in a way that is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Something that I can keep doing all the time. Again, that was really bad English. Um, in terms of like um, the time I get to make the videos and the effort I can get to put in, in terms of like, um, you know, what I get out of it, basically. I mean, who cares? Let's just make this video. So color space transform here. Now I'm gonna make a node beforehand by pressing Shift S, and this is gonna be for our look. Okay, so here we have our basic setup. Color space transform, balance, contrast, saturation, Brightness, desaturation, vignette, our look, and our color space transform. Now we're going to copy across all this to our images over here. So we just have a couple of images. Now these are raw images, and I'll show you what we can do with these images a little bit later in the video. But this one isn't raw, so we do need a color space transform on the start of our video, on the start of our grading, sorry. So color space transform effects, let's go up to color space transform, put this across. Now you need to know what your footage is. Now, because I downloaded this footage from ArtGrid, there's a link below, you can use it. I think you get a discount. Um, I know it's a Sony footage. So what I'm gonna do is my input color space. I'm gonna go to Sony S Gamut 3. Input Gamma, we're gonna go to Sony Log 3. Where are we? Here we are. Now, the image looks awful. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. Um, color space transform. We're gonna work in DaVinci wide gamut today. Output gamma DaVinci intermediate. Tone mapping, we're gonna leave all this off, okay? Eventually. Um, this is what we use for ODT or if we're working in Rec 79, that's a different video. So we have our color space transform here. Now I need to show you my color management. Oops, my color management for my project settings. So my color management here. Now this is what I'm doing here. Now I'm doing this so I can solely work 
in the nodes in my DaVinci Resolve. So I'm not um, setting it up here because we were doing a double, basically a double color management. If we did this up here and then in our nodes, now I'm just gonna drink this coffee. Cold coffee, delicious. Delicious, not delicious. Okay, great. So color space transform, we've done that. Now we need to do again, a color space transform in the last one or the ODT. So color space transform. I'm just gonna copy the cross, control C and press control V. Again, I've done this 1 million times. So for me, this is all very simple stuff. But if you're learning Resolve for the first time, then this is a really good way to get into it. And you're gonna learn all the things that you need to know to how to make a nice looking image. So we're gonna swap up here. Because we're going from our input color space DaVinci Wide Gamut, which was this one here. So our output is DaVinci Wide Gamut, meaning all this stuff here, okay? We're working in a wider color space. Then we're going from that DaVinci Intermediate Wide Gamut back into our color space in Gamma. And then we're gonna to go to our Rec 709. Okay, now Gamma, you can either go 2.2 if, if this is just for web, or you go 2.4 if you're doing, um, you know, at the cinema, things like that. But let's say we'll go Gamma 2.2, because this is only only gonna be on the interwebs. Gamma 2.2, tone mapping method, we're gonna go luminance mapping, use custom max input, put this bad boy right up. We don't want any clipping or anything like that. You wanna have the maximum amount of space. Um, I'm working on two monitors, so you won't see my, um, what do you call them? You know, my parade and everything like that. Maybe I'll bring them across when we do some other things, but don't worry about that for now. Uh, use custom max, you can just leave that. Gamut tone mapping, you can either use, or oh, saturation compression, sorry. So, sorry, with the tone mapping method, you can either use Luminance or DaVinci. They're the two ones that you really wanna work with. I'm gonna go Luminance today. Okay, so let's look at our footage real quick. So we have a really nice starting point when it comes to our footage here. So if I turn all those nodes off, and turn them on. We already have a good looking image. Um, you know, this is possible. If you were working on a project, you had no budget, you didn't know how to color grade, you could just do this if you're a student filmmaker and be like, well, this is a good start. Add a little bit of contrast, a little bit of saturation. Boom, you've got a short film. If you did make a short film. So what I could do now is I could copy all this across um, to this, right? So all I have to do is middle click mouse button and same with this one. But the problem is, is that this footage is raw. Okay, so we don't actually need to do a color space transform at the start. So I'm gonna just reset that. Now, what I mean by raw is it was recorded using the raw format. Then in Resolve, you set it up in your camera raw settings here. So under camera raw, Come down to Black Magic Raw because I know both these clips are Black Magic Raw, and we're going to go to Decode Using Project. Now I want to work in uh, not Black Magic, Black Magic Design, DaVinci Wide Gamut, and this one is sorry, DaVinci Intermediate. Where is it? Yeah. Now normally I have this set up, but um, for some reason I didn't put it on uh, load defaults, but that's fine. And we're gonna to go to, oh, before we go into this, I another quick one we wanna talk about is with your, uh, if I could find it. Oh, where is it? I always forget this stuff. Cause I never change it. Um, oh, here. We wanna be in uh, this one here. I can't pronounce that word. Yeah, you wanna be in this one here. You wanna be in trilinear. So this one here. Uh, Tetrahedral, yep, this one here, this is the one you wanna work in, it works a lot better than the other one. So click save. Now our image looks great. So again, copy this across, boom. We have a nice looking image. So off, on, and again, we're at a really good point. We're at a good starting point. Nothing's too crazy. Me having a stroke here. Um, yeah, we have a nice, looking image here. So let's go back to our original image and let's just muck around. So what do we wanna do first? Well, the first thing I would actually do if I was grading this project is I would use a LUT. Now I have made LUTs for myself. So when I work on, let's say music videos, 
short films, documentaries, things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I always use a LUT. Now I do this because I built that LUT. I know how it works. Um, so that's just the way I do it. But today we're not going to do that. We're going to create a look. So we're going to create a split tone. Now to do this, I'm not going to make a split tone in this uh, footage here because I want my split tone to work on all the footage that I'm working with today. So in my edit here, I'm going to come down to my empty space here. Now I'm going to go across and I'm going to find, actually I'll just type it in. I'm going to type in gradient or grayscale, sorry. Where is it? This bad boy here. Okay, we're going to put this on. So this is under effects. Uh, it's under generators in um, the edit page. Now at the moment, it's not in a solid. So we just have to go a new compound clip and that'll turn it into a solid. Let's go back to our color page. So everything I'm going to do today is completely free in Resolve. So don't worry about that. In our effects, we're going to go to DCTL. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a middle gray point that works with DaVinci Intermediate. So I just have to find it. I have a lot of DCTLs, uh, really good ones. You should check them out if you can read that quickly. Let's have a look. Okay, <laughs> right at the top, of course. Great card. So in my great card here, uh, this one's from Core Henderson, amazing color scientist and colorist. This is our little point here, as you can see. So that's middle gray for us, meaning that if we put a point here, anything below here and above here, we're not going to be affecting. So we want that to happen. So what we can do is just click a little point here, like so. And now we have our middle gray selected. And then I'm going to right click this, remove all effects. Now, the reason why I do my looks with a grayscale is because it's easier for me to see what's going on. So I can tell if I make this a little bit bigger. Let's say we wanted that classic teal and orange look. So if I were to take out, uh, I'll just make a point down here though. I don't be hitting the dark areas. If I were to take out the red, let's say, and then take a little bit of the green out, right? Uh, take a little bit more out actually. Something like that. And then let's say we wanted to do uh, the, uh, you know, warmer skin tone. So we need to add a little bit more red into our brighter areas like so. And again, I'll just take it right out of the white. A little bit of green and that'll give you that nice like yellowy golden look. Okay. And then we take a little bit of blue out. Now with the split tone, it's up to you if you want to add contrast in. So at the moment, we're just adjusting the colors. We're not adding in contrast. Um, so with my LUTs, they have built in contrast, meaning that I would grab my luminance here, my Y, and let's say we, we bring it down. And then if we make this a little bit bigger, sorry. As you can see, we've added in a lot of contrast here, see? But we'll just leave that off for now. So when you're making these split tones, the, the thing that you really, really want to focus on is a smooth gradient. So I don't want my split tone to look like, let's say this. So we zoom right in here. See this big, big red line. That looks horrible. That means there's going to be a part of the image that basically stops at blue and then hits red. And it's going to be very noticeable in your image. So let's just take that off. So here. Nice, smooth gradient from like a black to a teal. And then that teal goes into a warmer color. So let's say this is the look we want. Uh, we're happy with this. It looks really good. So what we can do, let's go back to our dual screens here. Then, excuse me, we can copy that across. Take this effects off. Come back to our image here. Get a nice frame, let's say here. Then in this frame here, we can just paste that look on. Now we already have a look. So off, on, off, on. Now let's see if this look works on the other ones. So this guy here, again, just paste it on. So off, on, 
It looks a bit warm, but this image was pretty warm in the first place. So we can just adjust that. And then this girl here, let's add some looks on. And again, she is also too warm. So maybe we've made that split tone just a little bit warm. So what we can do is we can just go back, let's say to this one here, and maybe just bring out the reds just a little bit, okay? And bring it across to her and click it on. Off, on, off, on. Okay, so we're gonna call that not good for now, but we're gonna move on. So let's go back to our image here and let's have a look. So we have our look built in. Now what I wanna do is I actually want to balance my footage here and put it in a nicer place. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna to go to Gamma and I'm gonna to go to Linear. Then I'm gonna to go to my Lumens Mix here, put it all to zero. Now I'm gonna make that adjustment. Let's take clips off. So I feel like with this image here, I actually wanna be a little bit warmer. So now we're in linear. I wanna push this to that warmer kind of look. So I'm gonna say around about here looks really good. So this is before we did that balance and then this is afterwards. So now we have this nice warmy pink color going in. Okay, so that's a good start, yeah? But well, we can build on this, of course. So I'm basically just winging this as we go. Now we wanna add some contrast, so, but how do we add that contrast? Do we add it using the curves down here by just using the Y? Or are we gonna add it using our contrast? Now, the important thing here is our pivot. Because we're working in DaVinci wide gamut space to intermediate, we wanna be in 0.366 because that is the middle gray when it comes to our working space. So in my contrast here, I'm just gonna add a little bit in, not too much. Okay. So that is off, that is on, off, on, looking pretty good. So saturation, we can add saturation in a couple of different ways here. We can right click, we can go to color space and work in HSV, and then we can take our channel one off and channel two off. Then we can use our gain here to bring the higher saturated parts of our image down and our lower saturation points up. So let's say around about here looks really good. So off, on, off, on. So we have a really interesting look so far and we've barely done anything. And that's really the beauty of it. We haven't really done that much. All we've done is just a few little tweaks to our image here and we've already got a good looking image. Now, in terms of brightness, again, let's go to our node here, right click, gamma, linear. We're gonna be working in a linear uh, brightness. It just works a lot better in my opinion. So you know what I'll do is I'll bring across my scopes here. So let me just take off dual screen. Get rid of that garbage, that garbage. Okay, so on our parade here, let's swap this to, um, what do you want? Mm, let's say waveform. Let's say waveform, but let's not colorize. Okay, so we've got a lot of information down the bottom here, and we can see that our brightest points are around 896. So if I were to go up higher, then we're gonna get a really bright image. Now, I'm not a fan of bright images, I actually think this is sitting in a pretty good spot. We could actually just hey, bring it up just a little bit to add a little bit of brightness to our image. But for now, I think that looks really good. So off, on. All we're doing is just boosting up those levels in our scene here. So another thing that we could do is we could actually bring some of these highlights down in an image just to soften it up. Now I've already made a preset for this. so. In my node here, I'm gonna go across to my gallery. Now I've made a video of how to do this, so I'll leave a link below or somewhere else on the screen. You can do that, but all we do is we just bring it across, take this off, and it's just softened our highlight. So if we put that on, this is before we've made that adjustment, and then off. So off, on, and it's just softening those highlights. Maybe a little bit too much, but that's easy fix. We can either use the key here and just bring it down. We don't want maximum, 
key. Let's say remember here, or we could just do it in the highlight section here. Okay, off, on, and that's all that's doing is just softening those highlights. Now we have an interesting look here. Uh, we can do some more. We could do a vignette if we really wanted to. So what we could do in our little node tree here, kind of a vignette, bring this across, and we could just do a simple vignette. Now, what I'm gonna do in my vignette is I'm gonna make a really thin vignette here, and I'm gonna come down to here, and this is gonna turn it from everything being affected into here to everything outside here being affected. So if you come down this little box here, at the moment, if I were to make an adjustment here, you were darkening everything inside. So we turn this on and that's everything outside. Interesting to know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to my uh, blur and blur and I'm just gonna blur it out just a little bit. So blurring is up, not down. Let's say like that, make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it less obvious. Off, on, off, on. Maybe just knock the smallest amount of light out. Off, on, so off, on. And now our attention is squarely on this character here. Now, because we've made that vignette and because we have a moving image, what we need to do is we need to track it. So in our little tracker here, we're gonna take respective 3D off and we're gonna take rotate off. We don't need either of those things. So, and we're gonna leave it on clip. We're not gonna leave it on frame. Frame is frame by frame, but we're gonna see how resolve goes with it on clip. So come down to your tracker here, the little arrows going forward and reverse, click that. Now it's gonna track that image for us. So if we just play that back, I'll turn this uh, power window off. We have a really good track. Resolve has done a very good job. I actually haven't updated to the latest Resolve, so I should probably should get that a go. Uh, I am working on a edit for a music video. By the time this video comes out, I'll probably actually be finished it, hopefully. Okay, anyway. Oh, yeah, I shot some stuff the other day, but who cares? All right, so now we have our image here and we're sitting in a good place. We could do some other things. So we have a really, again, like I said, a nice looking image. We could do a lot more, but before we start doing some crazy secondary stuff, what we could do is actually see if this copies across to our other images. So my image here, I'm gonna copy it across. <laughs> I'm gonna delete this vignette. Um, I'll leave highlights on. And then in my balance, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it away from obviously this awful, awful red look. Let me just choose my um, vectorscope here. So we can see that the red is the prominent color here and because I want a more split tone look, I wanna move this chunk of color to be about more here. So in my gain here, I'm just gonna push it towards the middle here. Okay. So if we make this a little bit bigger, before the balance and after the balance. So we've already got a really interesting look here. We could actually probably make it even a little bit less green. Okay, so now we have our look here. Now we have a little bit too much green going on, but it's not too bad. We can actually go back and change that balance or we'll change that split tone. But all in all, not a bad looking image. Probably have a little bit more contrast. Maybe a vignette, but fine for now. Let's check out this image. So <laughs> that didn't work. But that's easy fix. Again, just balance. Just bring it around. Let's say there. Now this image here, it needs to be brighter. So again, just brighten it up. It's a really saturated image. So I'm gonna take out a lot of the saturation of this image. So 
So we have a nice looking image. Her skin is a little bit too bright. She's overall a little bit too pink. But if we get a nice frame, let's say here, whoops. We could do some things with this image here. Not the best footage in the world. So let's go back to our spaceman. More interesting. Okay, so in this one here, let's start creating a uh, a more crazy look. We have a nice base look here, but let's do some other things. So we've gone over all the basics um, when it comes to just doing your project. So if you're working on a project, you don't know how to color grade. This is the really basic, easy steps where you can just create an image. So what I'm going to do in my secondaries here, under my desaturation, I'm going to use something I never ever use, and that is a color slice. And now I don't use a color slice simply because I have so many DCTLs that do the exact same thing. So I really don't need it. What I'm going to do is under the green here, I'm going to warm it up. I want to make this an alien planet. Okay. So under my hue here, I'm going to change it. And I want it to be, why is that not working? I want it to be a more yellow look. And I have no idea why that didn't do anything. That's, uh, okay. Is this the hue? Okay. As you can see, I never use the color checker. So I have, I mean the color slice. I have no idea why this is not working. Let's have a look. Okay. So it's working in the yellow section. Okay, that's fine. So now we have, I think I just added a whole bunch of saturation. So I have to find a way to change this green. Maybe I can move this across. Let's have a look. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is saturation and density. This is not the hue. Uh, sorry about that. So in my green here, I'm going to change the colors to get something that is a little bit more interesting. And again, it's not working. That's frustrating. We can do it in the, the yellow here. Okay. So this is more interesting. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's pick up the screen. So now if we muck around with this hue here, cause we're only targeting the green areas, apparently, even though it's in the yellow area, we can create a more, well, interesting look. So there's two ways we can go about this. One way is we can really bring up that green and we can get a really more commercial look, the high saturated colors, let's say like a music video, or we can go something that is more in my flavor and a little bit more post-apocalypse, something like, like this is a really cool look, I think. Um, and because it's all tracked and everything, we don't have to worry about crazy stuff going on. So we have this really interesting look going on. So if I turn that note off, turn that note on, we have this. So it looks like, a completely different scenario that we're in before. So this looks more like this dude's hanging out on a dead planet as to opposed to this guy is just in a forest in uh, Queensland hanging out, drinking a Bundaberg or something. So yeah, really cool, interesting look. And we can adjust the density apparently with this one here. So we get some nice dense colors and we can even take out saturation or we'll add the saturation in. I think around about here it looks really cool. Now I think this blue is quite distracting. Maybe it's cyan. So I'm going to take out this cyan. Yep. So we're going to take that out. We're going to take the density out of it. Looking really nice so far. Um, we could take some more blue out. Hopefully, let's have a look. It's not really doing anything. Uh, add some more. Okay, okay. A bit more density. Uh, skin tone, we can't really see the skin tone. So we'll just leave it. I actually take a little bit of saturation out of the skin tone. And our reds, if we add more density, we're really just hitting this guy's lips. And that's it. That is so funny. So there's no real point. <laughs> it's no real point changing this one. I mean, we're just hitting the man's lips. I mean, who cares? So we have this look here, really interesting look. 
we've gone from this look here and we've turned it into this look here. And this is all in the free version of Resolve. So this is what this video is about. This is just some basic things that you can uh, learn and um, apply to your own project. There's nothing too, um, you know, there's nothing too technical about what I've done. This is the things that I do when I'm working on projects when I get paid for. People pay me to, you know, do color grading and do things like this. Once you know how to do color grading and once you know how to manipulate your image in certain ways and know how to do color management and all those type of things, then you can start doing anything you want, really. It's up to your imagination. So if I were to show this to a client, maybe they're like, oh, I really like it, but let's say that I want it to be really green. I don't want this to be really warm. You say, well, I know. I know how to do that because, you know, I've, I've learned how to do color grading. So all I have to do is come back to my yellow section because I want to change the green, apparently, and I'll just change the hue. And I'm like, okay, well, we can go for this type of look here. And they're like, I really like that green, but maybe it's a little bit too strong. You say, okay, well, no worries. This is your third note, so you don't get any changes off this anyway. So you bring down the green, you know? And they're like, oh, that's in a really good spot. Can we do something else? Like, well, you can, but you have to start paying me because you only get three changes. But anyway, that's the look. And then with this one here, you're like, well, uh, the skin tone looks really good. I like where it's sitting. It's a little bit red for me. And you say, no worries. I'll come down to my color slicer here and I'm gonna bring out some of those greens. So I'm gonna desaturate those greens a bit more, okay? And I'm gonna add some density to my greens. Now, when it comes to my reds, I want my skin tones to be denser. So I come down my skin tones here and add a little bit more density. And then I take a little bit of that saturation out, just a little bit. Now we have a more interesting look. So if we zoom right into this guy's unfortunate face and I take this color slicer off, color slicer, yeah, color slice off, turn it on, that's what we've got. You know what I mean? It's just a couple of little different changes and we've already created something that's far more interesting. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna come across to my clips here. And again, the same thing applies. We paste this on. Now we look at our image here. So that's off, okay, and that's on. So all these little adjustments that we're making is just helping to build our grade off, on. It's just about learning all the fundamentals when it comes to grading. Then you know what to do when someone asks you to do something in terms of, um, you know, grading a project, something like that. What other footage can I show you? Oh, I don't have anything saved. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so anyway, if this is the things you want to see, I can do more basics things. This is actually easier for me than doing something that's more um, technical, anything like that, because obviously I'm just running it through with you. And I actually enjoy doing this more than having to edit something that takes a really long time. I'm actually working on a feature film at the moment, and the look we're going for is something like this. Uh, I'm using probably about 10 more nodes to get the look that I want, this spacesuit, this is sort of like, um, uh, this isn't my footage, this is from ArtGrid, but the look we're going for is we're using this kind of look, but with this spacesuit, it's gonna be a different color. Uh, it's gonna be almost glowing. Uh, it's supposed to be like an alien planet. So we're trying to do a feature film on a tight budget, and we're gonna do a lot in terms of the color grading to really enhance the story. It's gonna be a horror film and it's gonna be amazing. And I mean, that's about it. But anyway, this is like some of the examples I've been sending the cinematographer about how we're gonna go about it. Uh, he's pretty happy with it. Um, I mean, he should be, because he's a friend of mine. <laughs> he has to be. I'm directing, writing it, coloring it, hopefully not editing it, but I have a feeling it will be. And then he's obviously shooting it. But I mean, you know, if you want to know more about that, leave a comment below. If you want to know anything, leave a comment below. Anything about the world. Um, I don't know much, but I'll see what I can do. When it comes to your, um, what do you call it, split tone here, I would say just muck around with it. You know, you don't have to do teal and orange if you don't want to. You can just do anything you want. It doesn't matter, you know. But just because 
all I would say is don't break your image. So if I were to put, um, you know, a bunch of contrast in like this and then like this, okay, and then copy that across to this bad boy here. Where is it? Here. You know, it looks awful, yeah? So when it comes to split tone, try and keep it simple. Don't try and keep it really crazy. Uh, yeah, so that's the video. Again, if you want to see anything else, make sure to comment below. Uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, this may be my last video for a long time or maybe forever. I don't know yet, but we will see. And again, just changing your balance like so completely changes your image. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. That looks pretty cool. We'll warm it right up. You have a more of a sepia look. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. This footage is like really, really fun to work with. Uh, I've been working with this for days, so yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know, let me know. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know if you're struggling with something in Resolve that you don't understand. Something keeps breaking, you know, clips aren't linking, or you don't know a setup, you don't know export settings, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Let me know and I'll see what I can do. I hope you have a um, fantastic day. Um, that's about it. Hope you're doing well and safe. And if you're going on holidays, hope you have a good time. I recently bought a medium format Pentax 6x7. So it gets 10 shots per roll. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I love film. I've been shooting it for a very long time. So I'll probably start doing more of that. Anyway, have a good time. Ciao, ciao.